Seven astonishing facts about the Russian czars. Astonishing fact number one. Ivan the Terrible. The original bad boy czar. Ivan IV, better known as Ivan the Terrible, really set the tone for what we imagine a Russian ruler to be. He wasn't just terrible at dinner parties. He was terrible at everything, from ruling to well fathering Ivan once killed his son in a heated argument, which is about as grounded as medieval royalty could get. Ivan had a personal police force called the Opernina, who dressed in black and rode black horses. Basically, they were the Russian equivalent of Batman and Batman was more into torture than justice. He had a tendency to exile people to Siberia, as if that's just a casual thing. Sorry, Karen. You complain about the soup? To Siberia with you. Problem solved, czar style. Ivan was known for his mood swings, which were less, I need coffee and more, I'm going to decapitate someone today. Not exactly a charmer. He had a church built called St. Basil's Cathedral, which was so beautiful that Ivan had the architect blinded, so he could never make something that lovely again. Because why reward talent when you can ruin it for everyone else? In his later years, Ivan became obsessed with religious rituals, spending hours each day praying. Yet somehow, that didn't stop him from the occasional massacre. Guess that's called balance. If you think your neighbors are noisy, Ivan once destroyed an entire city, Novgorod, because he thought they were plotting against him. No conspiracy, just a hunch. Talk about overreacting. Ivan also fancied himself a bit of a chemist. He had a passion for creating strange concoctions, often testing them on animals and prisoners. Essentially, he was a medieval version of your shady neighborhood pharmacist. His second wife was poisoned, probably by himself because, you know, if you can't find a good assassin, just DIY. Before his death, he became convinced that he was surrounded by witches, which is possibly the most Russian problem ever. Ivan died playing chess. He literally made one wrong move on the board and in life. Astonishing fact number two, Peter the Great, party hard, rule harder. Peter the Great wasn't just great because he said so. This guy was over six feet tall in a time when the average Russian was the height of your Ikea bookshelf. He towered over everyone, literally and figuratively. Peter loved to party like a frat bro, but he had a taste for high society. He'd host all-night booze fests and force his guests to drink vodka until they dropped. If your hangovers are bad, imagine living in Peter's time. You wouldn't even make it to brunch. Speaking of booze, Peter started taxing everything from beards to coffins. Yes, you heard that right. He taxed beards because, apparently, having facial hair wasn't hard enough. So much for no shave November. Peter had a thing for ships. He wasn't content with a hobby. He needed a fleet. He even built a whole city, St. Petersburg, because, why not? I need a cool spot for my boats. Want to know how hardcore Peter was? He worked as a carpenter in the Dutch shipyards just to learn how to build ships from scratch. Imagine Jeff Bezos deciding to deliver Amazon packages on a bike. Same energy. Peter's military reforms made Russia into a superpower, but he wasn't exactly your textbook general. He'd personally beat up soldiers who annoyed him. There's hands-on leadership, and then there's Peter the Great leadership. He even had a notorious jester's court, where people would dress as clowns and mock the church. It was a royal roast, except the church probably didn't find it funny. Peter was a dental enthusiast, not for his own teeth, but for pulling out other people's. He liked to practice dentistry on the side. Who knew that being a czar also qualified you for moonlighting as a dentist? He had a thing for public executions, probably because Netflix wasn't a thing yet. He even executed his own son for treason, which would make any family reunion incredibly awkward. Peter died from bladder issues, which might be the least great way to go. For a guy who conquered and reformed so much, being taken down by your bladder is just tragic. Astonishing fact number three, Catherine the Great, horse girl, but make it royal. Catherine the Great wasn't actually Russian. She was a German princess who took over the Russian empire and became one of its most famous rulers. That's the political equivalent of showing up to someone else's birthday party and then blowing out the candles. She was called the Great, not just because of her ruling skills, but also because she expanded Russia's territory by over 200,000 square miles. That's like adding a whole new country just because she felt like it. Catherine had an insatiable curiosity, especially about men. She had more lovers than Shakespeare had tragedies, and she wasn't shy about it. You know you're powerful when people applaud you for that kind of behavior. 
She corresponded with Voltaire and other Enlightenment philosophers because, apparently, ruling a giant empire wasn't intellectually stimulating enough. Talk about a side hustle for the mind. Catherine modernized Russia, introducing things like vaccines, education reforms, and French fashion. Because nothing says progress like combining science, schooling, and style. She was basically the Anna Wintour of 18th century Russia. One of her most infamous rumors is that she died while trying to ahem, get romantic with a horse. Spoiler alert, it's not true. But the fact that people still believe it tells you how wild her reputation was. She loved collecting art so much so that she built the Hermitage Museum, which now houses one of the largest art collections in the world. Who needs an art gallery when you have your own palace to stuff with paintings? Catherine wasn't all high society, though. She could drink vodka with the best of them, and once allegedly won a drinking contest against several Polish men. Talk about girl power. She instituted some of the most progressive laws of the time, even granting rights to serfs. But let's be real. She was still a ruler, so the rights were more like privileges you could lose if you sneezed the wrong way. Catherine ruled for 34 years and died peacefully in bed. For a woman constantly surrounded by scandal and intrigue, that's like a mic drop on her own life. Astonishing fact number four, Nicholas II, the last of the Romanovs. Nicholas II wasn't exactly cut out for ruling. His motto might as well have been, I didn't sign up for this. His reign was one long, awkward attempt to keep Russia from falling apart spoiler. He didn't succeed. The man had a serious case of imposter syndrome. He confessed that he was completely unprepared for the throne, which, you know, isn't what you want to hear from the guy running the country. Nicholas had a strange fascination with mystics, most famously Rasputin, a man who looked like he hadn't seen a comb or soap in a decade. Because when your empire is crumbling, what better solution than to bring in a creepy monk? Rasputin essentially became part of the royal family's inner circle, despite everyone else thinking he was a nut job. It was like letting a guy who believes in UFOs handle your family finances. Nicholas also loved family time, which is nice, unless your empire is collapsing. While revolutions were brewing, he was busy playing with his kids and trying to ignore that Russia was literally on fire outside. World War I was a terrible time to be czar, and Nicholas handled it about as well as a cat handles water. He made all the wrong moves, both on the battlefield and in politics, which only sped up his inevitable downfall. In 1917, the Russian Revolution kicked off and Nicholas abdicated the throne, essentially saying, I'm out. You guys figure this out. It was like quitting your job because your desk caught fire. The Romanovs were placed under house arrest and eventually executed in 1918. It's a sad end for a family who used to rule one of the largest empires on earth, but history is brutal like that. The Romanovs' execution was carried out in a basement by the Bolsheviks. It wasn't a clean job, multiple gunmen, chaos, and a tragic end. This wasn't just the end of the Romanovs. It was a final curtain on the Russian Empire. The mystery of Anastasia, Nicholas's daughter, sparked legends for decades. Many imposters claim to be the lost princess, but spoiler alert, Disney movies aren't real and the real Anastasia didn't make it. Astonishing fact number five, Alexander II, the czar who freed the serfs but got blown up for it. Alexander II was known as the Tsar Liberator because he freed 23 million serfs in 1861. Think of it as Russia's version of Lincoln's Emancipation Proclamation, except without the fancy top hat. You'd think freeing millions of people would make you popular, but nope. The Russian nobles were furious because, heaven forbid, they do their own laundry. So much for gratitude. Alexander II reformed the military, the legal system, and the government all while dodging assassination attempts like he was in a 19th century action movie. Seriously, the guy was like a magnet for angry anarchists. Speaking of assassination attempts, one time, a would-be assassin threw a bomb under his carriage, and Alexander just brushed it off like, eh, no big deal. That's czar level chill right there. Unfortunately, his luck ran out in 1881 when a second assassin threw another bomb at him. This time, Alexander wasn't so lucky. Ironically, he had just signed a decree to create a parliament the day before. Bad timing, dude. The explosion literally blew Alexander to pieces. His legs were reportedly so damaged that they had to be collected separately. I guess you could say his death was disarming. Too soon? The day he died, Alexander II was on his way to visit his troops. Imagine gearing up for a pep talk only for your boss to get blown up. 
That's one awkward briefing. After his death, his son, Alexander III, took over and reversed many of his liberal reforms because, apparently, progress is scary. Thanks for nothing, kiddo. Alexander II's assassination sparked a wave of brutal crackdowns and gave rise to even more revolutionary movements. It's like when you solve one problem but accidentally create three more except with bombs. Despite his violent end, Alexander II is remembered as a reformer and modernizer. His reforms were steps toward making Russia less medieval, even if he didn't live long enough to see them through. Astonishing fact number six, Alexander III, the Iron Tsar who couldn't be killed. Alexander III was the complete opposite of his father, Alexander II, where dad was all about reforms. Alexander III was like, nah, let's keep it old school. Think of him as the guy who refuses to update his iPhone because he doesn't trust the cloud. This guy was a brick wall of a man. Standing at six feet four inches and built like a linebacker, Alexander III was so strong that he once lifted a derailed train cart to save his family. Honestly, if ruling didn't work out, he could have had a great career in WWE. He was nicknamed the Peacemaker because Russia didn't get involved in any wars during his reign. But don't let the nickname fool you. He was still a hardliner who believed in ruling with an iron fist. He just preferred to crush his enemies domestically. Alexander III wasn't fond of Western influence. He once said, Russia will not be ruled by the advice of foreigners. Basically, he was the guy at the party refusing to try sushi because it's too exotic. Despite his tough exterior, Alexander III was known for his love of the arts. He founded the Russian Museum in St. Petersburg, but don't let that fool you. He wasn't exactly a softie. It's like a bouncer at an art gallery. You can appreciate fine art and still kick someone out. He also had a rather interesting health regime. Rumor has it that he believed in dunking his head in freezing cold water every morning. Because nothing says ready to rule like potential hypothermia. Alexander III didn't trust trains after the accident, so he preferred to travel by horse or carriage. Honestly, you can't blame the guy. He literally lifted a derailed train. I be done with public transport, too. He tried to stamp out revolutionary movements by censoring the press, cracking down on protests, and expanding the secret police. If you've ever tried to silence a rowdy group chat, you know how well that worked out for him. Alexander III was also a man of few words. He reportedly said so little during meetings that people were often unsure if they were dismissed or if he was just staring into the void. Intimidation level czar. He died of kidney disease in 1894, passing the throne to his son, Nicholas II. Little did he know, the empire he spent years holding together would collapse under his son's watch. Talk about a tough act to follow. Astonishing fact number seven, Elizabeth of Russia, the party-loving Tsarina. Elizabeth of Russia ruled in the 18th century and was known for being a serious party animal. Her court was like one giant, never-ending Russian rave. She loved fancy dresses, glittering jewels, and extravagant parties. She was basically the original influencer, minus the Instagram. Elizabeth never wore the same dress twice. In fact, she had over 15,000 dresses in her wardrobe. That's a fashionista on a level that would make even Marie Kondo throw up her hands and give up. Elizabeth ascended to the throne in a bloodless coup. She gathered a bunch of palace guards and said, You guys want to overthrow the government? And they were like, Sure, sounds fun. She walked in, took over, and then threw a party to celebrate. Despite being a party girl, Elizabeth was smart. She abolished the death penalty in Russia, which was a bold move in a country where public executions were practically a national pastime. No killing, just chilling, might have been her motto. She was known for her beauty and reportedly kept that beauty by using unusual methods. One source claimed she bathed in milk to keep her skin youthful. Hey, if Cleopatra can do it, why not Elizabeth? Also, got milk? Elizabeth never married, despite having many, many suitors. She preferred to keep things casual. Let's just say she wasn't in a rush to tie the knot, and why would she be? She had all the power, the dresses, and the parties. Marriage? Overrated. She was a major patron of the arts, particularly ballet, helping to establish Russia's love affair with the dance form. So the next time you see the Nutcracker, you can thank Elizabeth for making Russian ballet a thing. Elizabeth's court was notorious for its decadence. There were rumors that she would order fountains to flow with wine instead of water during her parties. 
Talk about turning water into wine, move over, Jesus. Despite her love of luxury, Elizabeth was surprisingly religious and had a deep devotion to the Russian Orthodox Church. She was the life of the party but still made time for prayer. Gotta have that spiritual balance. And that's it from this video. See you in the next one.